happen is called the Russian foot waifu anime is guess what another roasted dirty farming time let's see what mr 414 anime has to say if you haven't subbed to his channel go sub, go sub to, he's, he's the kurumi guy remember he's the kurumi guy that had the crazy amount of kurumi merch but hey let's see what he has to say about roasted dirty set of ingredients hot waifu a like a true anime fan, I like my anime to have a certain set of ingredients. Okay. Hot waifu, a bit tsundere, lots of blushing cute faces, yeah. scenes involving said waifu's feet, and you know what? Why not? Let's throw in a sister who's a bit feisty with her brother. I'm feisty. an Oshinoko fan, all right? Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're not quite there yet in Oshinoko, but I, I do hear that um, the girl that may win is... Like, right now, what are we doing in Season 2? It's the Battle of Losers right now. Like, Ruby got benched, but, you know, it's looking like we're going the Alabama route. <laughs> I also said true anime fan. Well, no, I'm definitely more of a degenerate anime fan, and I feel no shame. But there have been a few scenes doing the rounds on social yeah. media lately. Yeah, the feet scene and the horny sister scene. And, well, I just had to cover that series today. This is Alia sometimes hides her feelings in Russian, or Rushi Dere for short. And I will say, as a manga reader, this series is great and not entirely degenerate for those okay. of you who aren't into that side of anime. I don't even think that this anime is degenerate. Like, first episode had that one scene to bait people in, right? Like, you need a hook, right? If you want, like, a huge viral moment and controversy to talk about, you need people to get your eyes on the product. That's what the first episode's for. But beyond that, I don't feel like this anime is like relying on fan service to carry. Like, no, not at all. The fan service is extremely mild if you kind of ignore the first episode shit, which was a bit wild. Though I know a lot of you are perps. But I love ya. So Rushi Dele is all about the amazing Alisa Mihailovna Kujo. <laughs> Did I butcher that? Also no Mikhailovna, known as Kujo-san or Alia to her close friends. Alia is half Japanese and half Russian, and well, quite frankly, this girl really does have it all. Alia is super smart and gets the best grades. She's great at sports and- Wow, another anime where in a rom-com series, the main girl is the most popular, perhaps the most smartest, the most outgoing, the most athletic, probably a student council prez. This is so new, man. Oh my god. Well, everything else too. Plus, she's really pretty with blue sapphire-like eyes and long, shiny silver hair. Her beauty actually comes from her Japanese mother and those defining features of hers from her Russian father. And I've got to say, I feel like these are details that you shouldn't really need to include that may serve as like, because like little stuff like this, it's just going to offer more things from my head. Like I know it's not really spoilers, but like it's not declared in the anime. And once different things happen in later episodes for me to like question and you know, theorize about like, this is going to be pretty much indirect spoilers, but it is what it is. You know, I do have a soft spot for girls with silver hair. I mean, <clears throat> Amelia from ReZero, am I right? And I gotta say, for me, Alia is definitely on the list of the best silver haired girls, that's for sure. Maybe we should do a list video like that. Anyway, the bottom line is that Alia is a star at school. She transferred during her third year of middle school and has been the center of attention ever since. But she's also known as the solitary princess because Ice she queen. keeps herself to herself. Like, in the first moment we ever met Alia, the most popular guy tries to ask her out, and she totally shuts him down. I don't believe it. Is this guy really the most popular dude? Because I haven't seen his ass ever since. Like, if this is the most popular dude at school, like, our school is whack. Holy shit, the competition doesn't exist for Masatsuka then. Down. I mean, the guy seemed like a bit of a douche anyway, but you still, you hate to see it. And she's like this with all of the boys. Well, all of the students, in fact. However, Alia does talk to one boy. The Just other main one. character, Kuze Masachika. Kuze is like us weebs. A bit lazy, unmotivated, but loves anime and gacha games and will stay up to the early hours doing anything to do with anime and gacha games. Yeah, Kuze really is. Like, because I think about it. When you make a series, how are you going to make people like relate to it, right? You need to have some relatability with the main character. The more that you can relate to a series, the more that you can envision yourself in the portrayal of an a, in, in, a, in a character in an anime, the more you're likely to get really engaged and even like buy merch and stuff like that, right? So like every rom-com character, Kuze, right? Just 
lazy motherfucker doesn't do anything, right? Slacker, indifferent, but he's good looking. That's the one thing. Every rom-com main character has all of these shitty qualities that you, the fan base, are getting targeted by. But they're hot. Just so that, you know, <laughs> that's the one thing that breaks the immersion. But here's where the story gets interesting. So the premise of the series is that Alia often speaks her true feelings in Russian, thinking that no one understands her. But we know. But Kuze secretly understands Russian yep. because his grandpa made him watch Russian movies when he was younger. So, <laughs> Grandpa made him watch movies. Yeah. Okay. I thought that, like, he went out of his way to... I guess he might have asked the grandpa too, but, like, the whole thing was back in the day, which is now confirmed to be Masha. Pretty sure it's Masha. 99.99999% confirmed it's Masha. But to talk to her in that playground that was near grandpa's place... He had to learn Russian, right? So he learned it by watching movies with his grandpa? Okay. The grandpa's pretty interesting character. Because, like, we're getting to know more about the backstory of Masasuka, right? The mom and dad, divorce, you know, who, who's going to go who? Yuki's sick in bed, but the grandpa also exists. Okay. Was younger. So, <laughs> Kuze knows every sweet thing Alia says about him, even when she pretends that she's being mean. She, got no she clue. says that she's calling him Baka, but really, she's actually calling him cute. And he knows it. And I gotta say, imagine having the power to know everything someone is saying about you, but they have no idea about it. Wait, actually, no, I don't want that power. I've seen the YouTube comments, man. <laughs> anyway, Kuze does the noble thing. You know, he keeps it to himself, but he enjoys the fun moments that it creates. Alia, poor Alia, thinks that she's hiding her feelings, but she's practically confessing she her love right. She's an exhibitionist, bro. In front of him. It's brilliant. Despite this, Kuze is actually a really good guy you know he's one of the good ones and not in an over-the-top anime nice guy way he's like super chill and i really like that about him no for sure i i think he is super chill like even the most recent episode the first half where they're going about like why adia likes him and going through how he helped her understand you need to work as a team and got that one dub like he's pretty chill he's honestly a very decent guy there's like nothing like Overly, like, like, I do not hate the main character. Usually, I just fucking despise the main character of any rom-com that we watch. Like, I just, just, oh my god. Because they, and, 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 and they're supposed to be, like, you know, dumb, stupid, socially inept 15-year-old kids. So it makes a lot of sense. But, like, holy shit, it makes me mad. But Masachka, though, he is one of those refreshing male, male, male uh, characters in rom-com where I feel like, huh. He doesn't piss me off. The things that he does is rational. It doesn't even seem like he's getting bailed out. He's just kind of existing and helping the girls out. There's nothing bad about him. Even though he seems ordinary, Masachika is actually, you know, super smart, reliable, and quick thinking. He prefers to stay out of the spotlight and work behind the scenes, kind of like a ninja. And he's also great at talking to people, okay. you know, either charming them or getting exactly the reaction he wants. He's always aware of what's going on around him and really cares about his friends. He's kind, thoughtful, and he would even put himself in danger to protect the people he loves. So, like, usually... If I was like, when I get mad in rom it's because like the main character does not deserve the girl at all. This is one of the few situations where I'm like, you know what? He's actually helped her out so much. He's actually a genuinely good person. I'm perfectly fine. Like it, make, it's, it's, it doesn't bother me at all. But like some other, what rom comes recently has really pissed me off. I probably shouldn't trigger the fans. Yeah, the classic nice guy, but it just seems different with Masachika. Giji Haram. Fuck Giji Haram. Fuck that show. First episode was great. First episode was great. And then it's just like, I'm just cringing now the entire time. Stop it. Stop it. I, I can't. I fucking can't. Early teaser for the next performance review video. I'm dropping Giji Hottam. I don't give a fuck. The entire time I was watching Giji Hottam, I'm like, this is getting so cringe and old now. You're doing the same shit over and over again. Like, I'd rather be watching an SAO. There was like four or five separate instances during the reaction where I thought about canceling the recording session to just watch essay or something. That's how bad it was. I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ. 2.5D Ririsa, I probably felt the same way too if we continued that anime, bro. Dangerous in my heart? I don't hate Ichika. I don't. Not as much as I hated the other kid. I don't know. I don't know why. Ichika, 
like, I'm trying to really understand his character, right? I, I don't hate Ichika as much. Something about Gigi Haran pissed me off. I don't know why I got so fucking triggered. It's, it's random. Yeah. Now, what also makes this story fun is the way in which it flips the usual rom-com plot. Instead of the guy being clueless about the girl's feelings, even if she is making the way it around. blatantly obvious, Kuze knows everything, and it makes their interactions really kind of super entertaining for us to watch. And I gotta say, I love rom-coms, you know? I will admit that. A good rom-com, sign me up. I love them for their funny and sweet moments, you know? Watching the awkwardness and the cute flustered faces. This anime does that. You know what I think about rom-coms? I think that very, very well. For example, we get the rom-com equivalent of the beach episode, which is basically the girl trying on outfits for the guy at the mall. Love to see that. And though the Russian aspect of the premise is missing in this scene, yeah. it is a really good representation of the dynamic between Alia and Kuze and... I mean, let's face it, Alia is killing it in those different outfits. Even if she does take it a little too far in the end with the revealing one. It wasn't very revealing, but in the manga, apparently it really, really was. I like this whole episode because she was trying to get like Kuzi's affection and being like, oh my God, does he think I'm going to be cute? Which I, again, as a total degen, was not complaining about. No. Oh, wait. Of course. That's what it was. Not going to lie, Aria in the anime looks better than in the manga. Usually I side with like manga or light novel art, but, in, but, but for this series, like the anime Aria is better than manga Aria. I don't know, something about her overly large eyes and eyebrows, something about this facial model, I look at it and it just doesn't hit, but the anime Aria, it does hit. Not complaining about noise. Of course, the comedy aspect is also killer in this series. I'm sure you've seen the foot scene on your timeline at least once in the last couple of weeks. And other than this making me question if I have a thing for feet, I don't, by the way, I think. It was another expert showcase of the Alia Kuze dynamic and the well-executed comedy in the series. For me, Alia and Kuze were great. Foot service was comedy? I thought it was just dumb fan service. All right. To watch reading through the manga, but the VAs have really brought their characters to life in this anime. Uesaka Sumire voices Alia, but did you know that she also voiced Nagatoro from oh. Don't Toy With Me, Miss Nagatoro, which really does showcase her versatility as a VA. She just does such a- That's like the really, really cunny, cheeky, tan lolly that like teases the main character, right? Like, if I watch that shit, I'd probably drop it immediately because I get mad at the main character. I just feel like it's going to be one of those fucking animes. Just like Kubo-san, you know, won't leave me alone or some shit. It's just like, these main characters don't fucking deserve any of this shit. They're dense, stupid motherfuckers. And the girl deserves so much better. But in order to pander to the degenerate fucking audience that watches rom-com and rom-com only so that they can fantasize about, about getting pussy because they can in real life, the anime industry has to pander towards those freaks and give such fucking degenerate, unrealistic, you know, representation of a male character and a female character. I fucking hate rom-coms, man. <laughs> Straight up. I genuinely fucking despise most rom-coms. There's some I love. Kaguya-sama, I love. Tomo-chan is a girl, I love. Roshidere, very fun, I love. Dangerous in my heart, I think it's peak, right? Snafu, I love season season two. Season three, get me the fuck out. Snafu was a fucking train wreck by season three because everybody knew who was going to win by the time season three even started. No, fuck it. By the time season one ended, everyone knew who was going to win. And then season three was just like a sad, depressing, just melodramatic bullshit. I'm like, just get me off the ride, man. 100 Girlfriends, I love. But any anime where you just have the most cringe male character that is just so lacking of anything that, you know, the girl's supposed to get, it, it just pisses me off. It just makes me so angry. Like, tonight, we're gonna be watching Maki Heroin. That shit, everyone can die in that game, in that show, bro. Every character in that show can get cucked and loose. I don't give a fuck. They suck. Genuinely, they suck. I hate that shit. Dreaming Boy is a realist? Die. Natsukawa, die. Natsukawa's sister's cute. Everyone else sucks, dude. Fuck. I hate rom-com. I'm not even joking right now. I am giving you my unfiltered thoughts. A great job of portraying that ice queen. And I don't hate rom-com. 
I hate the rom-coms where it's those rom-coms that I just described. But I also did list other rom-coms that I do enjoy a lot. It's just... These fucking main male leads that are just so unworthy. And it's just so clearly... Like, pandering to that exact audience that they're trying to fucking milk the series of. Something about that pisses me off, man. Energy, yet the real vulnerable person that is underneath the front. One thing about Alia that we learned very early on is that she can be really possessive and gets jealous when Masachika talks to other girls. To best describe yeah, like her, she's a tsundere. A tsundere is someone who acts all tough and mean, but is actually a big softy on the inside mm -hmm. for those who are new to anime. Alia loves to tease Masachika, but deep down she really loves him. And the funny part is that she doesn't even realize how much she likes him most of the time. Whenever she starts to figure it out for herself, she quickly denies it like, no way. I can't be in love with him, but we all know the truth, right? And Urisaka Everybody just knows. nails this in her performance as Alia. The Sundare character is always a popular one among fans, and it's really important to get that tone. over Sundare. Yep. I think Sundare is overrated. I think all the fucking normie ass bitches always gush about Sundare girls when that's the most basic archetype of a girl, bro. Since like the early 90s, bro. But then, there was that one good line. Giguk hit me with such a good joke <laughs> about kudres and how they're pointless and how they're always just so emotionless and they always look like, oh, just talk like this in a monotone and I'm like, you know what, you're kind of right too. But Sundere, I don't know. Part of me is tired of that shit. And I've seen too much Sundere, they just piss me off, bro. Kudere though, is relatively new to me because I just figured that shit out after watching Data Live with Origami, so... I enjoy Kudere a lot more than Sundere, but who knows when the paradigm shift will happen. Maybe I'll fucking switch... Maybe something will flip in my head and I'll enjoy Sundere again over Kudere. ...tone in their voice just right. It's almost like one of their main selling points of the Sundere waifu. And she does it! She nails it! It's so good! I love her. When it comes to Masachika... And here's the thing about tsundere girls, like, you motherfuckers think that you all want a tsundere girlfriend just because you watch anime? I guarantee you, you wouldn't last one day with a tsundere girlfriend. I guarantee you, you would be so pissed off, you would be so fucking annoyed at how just shitty these tsundere girls are. Like, no, honestly, I'm not even joking right now. Because, like, you see the representation in anime thinking, oh, they're so cold, but then they get all dead, dead, dead. You try that shit in real life, you're going to think she's a fucking sociopath. You're going to be like, I cannot do this anymore. This is the most toxic girl I've ever met. Go away. Though I do get the Kazuma vibes from his dialogue at times, he's voiced by Amasaki Kohei, who you'll most likely know from ReZero, where he... And another thing, at this point, I'm not even watching this guy's video anymore. I'm just fucking on, going on a rant about rom-com. Another thing is the fucking Yandere, bro. Yandere, like the people that say they want a Yandere girlfriend, you're even more delusional than the Tsundere fans. Because what the fuck is a Yandere? They'll literally stab your ass. They'll kill you. But it's like, oh, I wish I could have a Yandere girlfriend. Motherfucker, you've never even kissed a girl, let alone have a fucking conversation with them. And you're jumping the gun and thinking, because you watch Yanime and you saw a Yandere girl that you want a girlfriend that's willing to fucking kill you? Like, ha no. You're insane! You have no idea about how insane these archetypes in real life would be! He voices best boy Otto. Kuze, for me, is a more complex character than the norm in a rom-com series. Nothing too mind-boggling, but there are- There is a bit of an interesting thing with going with Kuze regarding the backstory, right? And how reluctant he is to join um, Arya and act as a running mate because there was like a flashback scene of someone losing and them feeling bad. So Kuze probably was like, hmm, you know, I don't want other people to feel bad. Maybe he's just such a giga chat that he realized that if he does something and uh, gets in the spotlight, other people suffer. So he would rather back out and put other people in the spotlight instead. I think that's what's going on. But there's a little bit of complexity with that character for sure. Thanks for the bits, Pommy. He only said that because he wants the other names. No, 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 I do not want the other names. Hell no, nope. Are layers to his character that make him far more interesting than a, you know, oh, we just need a normal, everyday male uh, lead to compliment the girl. And I gotta say, Amasaki does a fantastic job of voicing him. Because, like Alia, there are two sides to him. The side he shows in person, and the side he keeps to himself. Masachika acts all cool and chill most of the time, but deep down, he's a whirlwind of emotions. You know, picture like a duck, you know? That backstory does seem so important with the divorce, 
Like, even the opening has so many crazy scenes of him, like, running off a fucking cliff to, like, save a ring or something. Like, there's a lot going on in the backstory, man. They're calm on the surface, but paddling like crazy underneath. On the outside, Masachika, well, he's carefree. You know, he's always joking around and having fun, but secretly, he doesn't have much self-confidence and sometimes gets really down on himself. He hides this sad and vulnerable side from right everyone, here. only showing it rarely to a few close people. And I think getting that balance right in the performance takes a lot of skill to make it believable to the viewer and to help us make a connection with the character. Amasaki has done just that. And overall, I think the VA is not for sure. I think the voice actors are all nailing their jobs. And honestly, like Kuze is one of those male main characters in rom-coms that I do not hate. I think that He's a perfectly fine character. He's a decent character. He's nice. He's considerate. He's pretty complex in his own plot with the backstories. Like, there's nothing about him that I, I get mad at, like some other fucking rom-coms where it's like, these motherfuckers don't deserve any of this shit. In the show are just great, and it would honestly be criminal if I didn't give a shout out to Maruoka Wakana, who voices Yuki. Yuki. Maruoka is a really new VA, but she has killed it as Yuki. Like, when reading the manga, I liked that face is the reason why I wanted to help cheer up my Onichan. So you decided to cheer me up by body pressing me. Classic incest. Yuki's character, but in these early episodes, I feel as if Maraoka's performance has made Yuki steal the show. And I like, low key, I never even like pay attention to popular voice actors' names. Like, I know some, I know most of them through their actual characters. Like, for example, I'll always say Dio's voice actor rather than the actual voice actor's name, which is probably disrespectful, but a lot of people know them for that voice actor, right? But like, Yuki, I had no clue who she was, but even after realizing now that she's brand new, like, I didn't feel like she was brand new or off. I, I thought she was like a veteran that's been just killing it. Like, nothing about it made me think that, oh, she must be a new voice actor. It's just like, wow, she's really good. And I mean in a very good way. She brings a real grit and gremlin-like performance to her gremlin. character, particularly in the Goblin. scene with Kuze, and it's as if she's been voicing characters for years, you know? And it seems to be a theme in this series because- I mean, probably, right? They're gonna be practicing. It's not like they just came in randomly, right? Because Yuki's character is another that has two sides to her. She acts like a proper young lady around everyone, but inside she's a fun-loving otaku who loves anime and light novels. Like, she always carries herself- Oh my god, guys! She just like us! She loves manga and light novels and anime? Wow! With elegance and grace to keep up the reputation of the Suo family, but sometimes her playful personality pops out like when she gets excited about the latest anime episode. Maraoka executes both so sides relatable. of Yuki perfectly. So if you haven't checked this anime out yet, then you need to absolutely get it on your watch list. Agreed. And you need to make sure you also don't miss out on these other bangers. Yo, go give Mr. 414 Anime a like. Sub to his channel if you haven't. That was a pretty good breakdown of, you know, what's going on with Roshi Data right now with three episodes outside without really spoiling much. So great video. I think that Roshi Data again is like, yes, while I say I hate I hate, I don't hate rom-com, I hate specific type of rom-com where I feel like the main character doesn't deserve any of this shit. And I enjoy rom-com where it's more calm than melodramatic rom. And Roche Diddy is a fantastic show that I would 100% recommend. And it's definitely not the fact that every video of Roche Diddy I make just gets more views than average. No, I'm milking this shit, bro. Every day for the next two and a half months, I will figure out a way to make a Roche Diddy video every day.